Hello and welcome to the very final episode of Cold Case Christmas. We've made it all the way through 24 episodes, like opening an advent calendar, there's been a different cold case or unsolved murder every single day from the 1st to the 24th of December. The case I'm talking about today is an unsolved murder from this day, 24th of December, 2008, when Margaret Sweet was murdered, a callous crime, on Christmas Eve. Let's get into this story. Margaret Sweet was known as May to some. She was an adventurous but kind person. According to family members, May loved outdoor activities such as whitewater rafting and hiking. Her loved ones described her as a reliable and caring young woman. She was an animal lover and she would rescue stray animals when she could. People were baffled by her murder, but yet that's exactly what happened to poor May. Before moving back to Colorado Springs, May lived in Nashville, Tennessee, where she met her abusive boyfriend, Jerry Dale Batts. The relationship was tumultuous. Betts denied, however, ever physically harming her, but May's family members state that they do remember seeing bruises and injuries on her body while she was dating him. On May 13th, 2008, just a few months before her murder, May filed an order of protection against Bats. The order was filed after Bats followed her across the country when she moved to Colorado Springs. This inevitably raised suspicions about Bats when Margaret came up murdered, but he's denied any involvement. In fact, Bats told police he was on a date with another woman at the time of May's death. So what happened to May? Well, 24th of December, 2008, she had a lot going on in her life. She was 38 at the time. She was staying with her father and stepmother in Colorado Springs while her stepmother recovered from surgery. Despite all of this, she was looking forward to the Christmas holidays with her father and stepmother. Unfortunately, on the night of Christmas Eve, Margaret was brutally murdered outside of her father's home. Margaret and her father, James Egger, were taking in turns visiting Margaret's stepmother at the hospital. On the evening of December 24th, James was at the hospital while May remained at home. When James returned home, he found his daughter in the front yard. She had been shot to death. Throughout the investigation, detectives learned that neighbours heard sounds of a man and woman yelling around the time of May's murder. The yelling continued until a gunshot was heard. Despite this though, which is weird, 911 was not called and May's body was not discovered for many hours. The investigation also received other details about May's death that lead to a few different theories, yet no answers. So who killed May Sweet? After conducting a ballistics report, investigators learned that the gun used to kill May had also been used in another shooting that occurred the year before in 2007. During that incident, the gun was used to injure a man during a drug deal. The victim survived in that case, and like in this one, no arrest was ever made. But due to this finding, investigators wanted to determine whether or not May's death was related to drugs. However, when the toxicology report came back, it determined that May was sober, completely sober, at the time of her death. So investigators were unable to find any further evidence that she'd been involved in drugs or drug dealers of any kind. It seems like an odd coincidence that the same gun was used in that shooting in 2007 that involved a drug deal incident and then May's murder but investigators have been unable to identify the owner of the gun. So was this something to do with the abusive boyfriend Bats or was that just a coincidence? Because there's another altercation that officers looked at very closely, which again, may be just another coincidence, but who knows? You see, just days before her murder, a detective working on May's case 
told reporters that they had reason to believe that she'd got into a verbal argument with a group of people. The detective stated that they still had not identified those people though. It's unclear if these people were ever considered suspects or indeed if the incident itself was just another strange coincidence. There's very little information about this case to be honest and it appears that detectives have very little to work from. This was a murder that was conducted without apparent motive so even honing in on who might have done this to May when the obvious Bats is out of the equation there's no evidence against Bats whatsoever he allegedly has an alibi this convenience store argument may be completely unrelated but what else did police have to go off nothing absolutely nothing so the murder of Margaret Sweet on Christmas Eve 2008 remains unsolved to this day However, her loved ones have not given up on finding justice. So if you have any information that could help solve this case, were you in Colorado Springs on Christmas Eve 2008? Do you remember this case? If you've got any information that comes to mind, please contact the Colorado Springs Police Department at 719-444-7000. Or you can email cspd cold case at springsgov.com. All right, guys, this is the end of the mini series Cold Case Christmas. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've missed some of the episodes, they're all together in a Cold Case Christmas playlist. So you can just start at video one and you can work all the way through to your heart's content. Hopefully, at least one of these cases will have jogged a memory and tips will come in. It's heartbreaking when cases go unsolved, where people remain missing for sometimes years and years and years and families and loved ones never get any answered or murders go unsolved and the files just sit there year on year and somebody out there knows something and it's just one tip. Just one tip can crack a case wide open. I say that a lot, but it's absolutely true. So, happy Christmas Eve to you all, and a very Merry Christmas to you all, from me and my family to you and yours. And I'll see you very soon in the next video. Bye, guys. <laughs>